Well, for sheer volume of pages, no animal has generated as many novels as dogs. And yet for all their numbers, only a handful of dog stories reach the iconic state of a classic that Where the Red Fern Grows has become. Joining me now with more on this book and its Oklahoma author is our Andy Barth. Well, Rob, many believe that the popularity of Where the Red Fern Grows can be attributed to something the book author calls the dog wanting disease, an affliction most parents know all too well. And it was fully evident in a festival in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, honoring the author and the dogs he loved. It's the sound of Southern tradition, coon hunting. And it took center stage at the 2011 Red Fern Festival in Tahlequah. The coon dog trials are a beloved tradition that attracts dogs of all ages and sizes. But he runs so many coons, his legs got short. <laughs> but the two things they all have in common is their keen nose and that distinctive bark. This red fern, this is my first time. For Colby and his three month old dog Boone, today was a learning point. The coon dog trials aren't the only thing howling around Tahlequah. The festival offers live music and reminds people of the man who started it all. Wilson Rawls. During the festival, people gather in the middle of town to watch the film inspired by a boy and his dogs. I know what you want, son, but hunting dogs cost money and that's something we don't have very much of. Well, here they are. What do you think of them? Born in 1913, Rawls knew the tough times of the Great Depression. Riding the rails as a teenager, he wrote his tales on any scrap he could find. During those three years that I bummed around all over the country, I kept riding, I couldn't quit. Every chance I got, I'd ride on something. And I'd take the brown paper sacks and I'd cut the bottom of them out and split them open and I had a big sheet of paper. Making his living as a handyman, Rawls always kept a pen in his hand, spinning tales of his life back in the Oklahoma hills. We did it, we did it. The book and movie written by Wilson Rawls touched the lives of children all across America. The man responsible for tracking every fan letter and publication is archivist Tom Mooney. I just think this is evidence he really and truly liked the kids and they enjoyed making these school visits. Carefully archiving every fan letter from all 50 states, Mooney says Rawls kept every one and cherished those who wrote them. It's just a good story for kids. In his final letters to some of his friends, Mr. Rawls spoke of his desire to return to Tahlequah. And today, he finally made it back. I welcome you in Cherokee, During the festival, the Friends of Libraries in Oklahoma honored Wilson Rawls by designating the Tahlequah Public Library in Oklahoma a national literary landmark. You know that Woodrow Wilson Rawls is a great storyteller. Our Rob McClendon was the master of ceremonies of the event, which showcased the Cherokee Gospel Choir. <laughs> Along with some of Wilson Rawls' biggest fans and family. I think one of the most important things about these literary giants is that they provide another important dimension to our history. Dr. Bill Corbett is a professor of history at Northeastern State University. Wilson Rawls uh, was one of those kind of people who never forgot his roots. Uh, he was the kind of person who uh, always remembered about his life here. Not marrying until late in life, Rawls became published only at the urging of a devoted wife. 
And you know, I was so happy that somebody believed I could write. And I said, well, where are you going to send it? She said, the Saturday Evening Post. And I said, oh, for heaven's sakes. Nobody writes for the Post, but some of the biggest names in the literary world. She said, I've read stories in the Post. Not near as good as this one. But surprisingly, his book wasn't originally greeted with enthusiasm. It was only when school librarians discovered it, it became an instant children's classic. He got me a speaking engagement at the Intermountain Conference of Children's Literature. I had over 5,000 reading teachers there from all over the world. He not only wrote of it in his books, like Where the Red Fern Grows and The Summer of Monkeys, but he traveled the nation and shared his stories in schools across the country. When we drove up in front of that little school, here they come, and they pawed on me all the way into the school. Wilson Rawls never had any children of his own, unless you count his readers. Then you could say he had millions of children. Karen Neuer helped organize the event and says this classic boy dog story is something everyone can relate to. The story resonates with people. I mean, dogs are wonderful. Everybody loves dogs. And his story had such an impact on everyone who reads it. And it's just a timeless piece of literature. It's, it's truly a children's classic. Feeling love as we did then If I could only go back A classic story inspired by Southern tradition celebrated every year in honor of a man who loved his dogs and the land he grew up in. Well, Wilson Rawls wrote the same way he spoke, plain and simple, but in a way that still attracts young readers who can only imagine running through the backwoods of Oklahoma with their favorite coon dogs. Now, you said that he wrote plain and simple, and I know some English scholars may quibble whether he was a great writer or not, but you know, you walk into any fifth or sixth grade classroom and you see those prepubescent boys reading the book, and you see their eyes start to water and their lips quiver as the book gets really sad, and no one can doubt that he's a fantastic storyteller. That's absolutely right. Now, a quick question for you before you go. Why did it take Mr. Rawls so long to get this book published? Well, Rob, in all actuality, he really wrote this book when he was a young teenager in the foothills of the Ozarks. Um, but he was so ashamed with how he wrote that he burned these many, all of his manuscripts right before he got married late in life. And when he told his wife about them, she was so distraught about it, she wanted him and urged him to write these books again. And he rewrote Where the Red Fern Grows, and it only took him six weeks to rewrite the story. And she or had it published, and um, it was recepted right away. Well, certainly a great novel and a fantastic life story. Good story, Annie. I appreciate it so much.